I would like to talk a bit about chawans and the process I use to make mine. Each one I produce is unique and an exercise in experimental design. These forms are the ones I enjoy creating the most and more often than not, they create themselves. I try to work without too much thought about what I'm trying to produce. I am strongly influenced by Raku tea bowls and their hand molded or tebineri organic forms. No two are alike and the Raku masters over the years have all managed to achieve their own styles whilst retaining knowledge and family history from the original founder, Chojiro. Seeing these artworks and their great diversity within one style gave me permission to be creative and produce artworks in my own way. At the Raku Museum, there are plaques explaining the three states that need to be achieved by each master. The first is Shu, where they follow the rules set by their predecessor. This is the state of learning and gaining knowledge and skills. The second is Ha, break the rules and follow your own path. Follow your own design and making processes. And finally, Ri, transcending. This is the plaque for Ri at the Raku Museum. Following and obeying the fundamental rules, which are then to be broken, this is not such an easy task. Often one sways between the pendulum of Shu and Ha, the process causing doubt and uncertainty within a fierce magnetic ground searching for creativity, pulled and pushed by a spirit of obedience on one side and a spirit of challenge on the other. During this creative struggle, one experiences a brief moment to give up on oneself and leave the struggle itself, which is nothing but re, transcending. To release oneself is not freeing oneself from shackles, but to transcend the dualism of struggle between Shu and Ha, leaping higher up towards a true spirit of creativity. Ri is an egoless state, a pure spirit of a newborn, or the innocent smile of an old person. It is not an easy goal, and not everyone can arrive here. Shu Hari is also a concept within the martial arts. I find this concept motivating, and that I might one day reach this state. When creating a chawan, I like to consider the essential elements and how it is used within the tea ceremony. This is the anatomy of a chawan. The kuchizukuri, or the lip of the tea bowl. I like the concept of the lip looking like a softly undulating landscape. I make sure the rim is smooth to the touch and easy to drink from. The do, or the body of the chawan. As my tea bowls are hand molded to the shape of my hand, this means it is a satisfying shape for the user's hand also. This is where I like to add natural textures for the user to be brought back to textures in nature. Holding the bowl becomes a very interesting sensory experience. The koshi, or the lower back, where the body transitions into the base. I find curves instead of angular shapes here more pleasing. The kodai, or foot of the chawan. When drinking from the bowl, the left hand is placed on the kodai, so it is important for this also to feel satisfying to hold. Inside is the chasen zure, where the chasen to whisk the tea touches, so it is important for it to be smooth, so the tines of the whisk don't get snagged and broken. And lastly, the chadamari. Not all chawan have this, but I like to include it. I find that the matcha pulls here and you can appreciate your last sip. First I wedge the clay. I work from around 500 grams for a large chawan. After forming the clay into a ball, I use a rolling pin to make a basic cup shape. From this basic shape, I slowly work out the walls with my thumb on the inside, pushing out to my supporting hand on the outside. 
It is important to put water on the rim so it doesn't crack too much, allowing you to later make it into that soft landscape. It is also possible to do some of this forming at the bottom, where it is harder to reach with your thumb with a rolling pin. Some cracks form on the outside, but it is the texture that I'm going for. As long as the inside is smoothed and compressed enough, it doesn't affect the structural integrity. Once the basic shape is formed, I work on tearing and texturizing the clay with a blunt scalpel. Once I have worked the bowl and textured the dough, I let it dry a bit and turn it over when it is more stable to work on the koshi. Then I add the kodai using a coil of clay. I use the round end of a brush to make the indent where the kodai meets the bowl. With water and trimming tools, I form the shape of the kodai. Then it is perfecting the inside and the rim. I carve it out making the inner wall smooth. I also make the lip thin and smooth and carve out the chadamari. I hope you have enjoyed this insight into my chawan making process. Here are some other chawans I have made. If you are interested in this or anything else that I've made, please get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Everything's available at oceanridgekiln.com.